Okay, here we go. Killers roam the waters of Puget Sound. Have you ever wondered why there's not a lot of seabirds on Puget Sound anymore? Where'd they go? Doc Temke is on a mission to find the monsters that are swallowing up everything they touch. Oh, this is looking fishy. With one line in the water to catch dinner. Look at this little guy. Doc sends his other lines in with cameras attached, trying to catch a mindless predator. Watch it go. It's a full-time job. I'm out here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I haven't had a day off in 52 days. What he found shocked him. Yeah, it's tumbling along in the current. Frightened him. It's like a wall. And this wall is invisible to the fish and the seabirds. And sickened him. They never quit killing animals, ever. He calls them the ghost nets of the Puget Sound. When you hold up a dead animal and the carcass is there, it's kind of a ghost, isn't it? About 300 feet of gill net here that was abandoned. It's probably a year old. There's about 200 crabs in this net. Doc estimates there are thousands and thousands of ghost nets floating around the sound. The nylon mesh uh, does not decompose in two or three years. You cannot physically take it in your hands and rip it apart, no way. An indestructible killer, growing in number every day, every month, every year. These nets get cut in half most of the time by a boat or a big log jam, and they lay abandoned along the, the bottom, killing and trapping all kinds of marine life. There's a small school of piling perch that was dead and rotten in the net when we brought it up. It gets heavier and heavier and heavier, and you can see the cycle, it just never stops. The nets are used by fishers to catch salmon. These nets are four or five thousand dollars a piece. The, the fisher isn't going to want to lose his net on purpose. He sets his net, and half a day later, a boat has gone through it. Now you got pieces. Doc doesn't want to waste time placing blame for the ghost nets. Never going to go away. No, not going to go away. Even if you banned netting, no more netting, it's still there. It's still there. To fight these predators, we're going to take the camera and fly it right down over the top. See if I can get a hold of that. Bring it up. With a few fishing hooks, Doc uses the same cameras that found the ghost nets. We're lucky because this one doesn't have any crabs in it. To remove them. One net was so full of seabirds and stuff that it took 14 people three hours just to cut them all out and to properly dispose of the carcasses. Beyond the danger and death for wildlife, ghost nets also threaten humans. It's a pretty scary thing to see in the water. It can be death to a diver. You don't panic. The faster you move, the more panic that you have, the more you're going to get tangled. Both Mark and Doc advise divers or swimmers to avoid any contact with a ghost net. To get rid of these killing machines. Off she goes. Doc has a lot of work to do. We have to figure out ways to, to try to clean up our environment, and we can do a lot of good for the habitat just by removing the 66 nets we've already pulled. So many ghost nets roaming the sound, killing everything they touch, must have an effect on our entire ecosystem. I cannot help but think that my um, physical health is affected by all of this derelict gear that's laying in our habitat. Doc is one man on one boat, eliminating a killer, one ghost net at a time. They're not going to go away. It's going to be here forever and ever and ever.